there we go. All right, so like I said, my name is Heidi McIndoo. I am a registered dietitian. And today we are going to make, it's all about cooking for the season. So I wanted to think of um, some foods that were in season. And I came up with this butternut squash uh, cranberry quinoa salad. Uh, so like I said, before I get into this, um, I have everybody muted, but I do have the chat open. So if anyone has any questions, I can see the chat just fine. Uh, so please write your questions in there and I can answer as we go along. Um, or I may save them to the end. Depends on, on how we're doing. And I want to make sure you can. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so the thing about cooking for the season, why it's, um, you know, an, an ideal thing to do is, first of all, uh, when you're buying foods in season, they tend to be more affordable. They tend to be less expensive because they don't have to get, um, you know, shipped in or stored somewhere. They're picked and sent to your store immediately uh, as they are fresh. So it's uh, it's really nice to have that availability. Also, uh, seasonal foods, because they're fresher, tend to be, uh, in some instances, a little bit more nutrient dense. Uh, so we're getting um, more nutrients with, with each meal. And also, when you cook in season, you eat more varied foods, because if you're eating what is in season during each season, uh, you're getting a greater variety of food. So you're getting um, you know, maybe asparagus and peas and, and berries in, or strawberries, I should say, in the spring, and maybe in the summer you're getting more blueberries and raspberries and uh, tomatoes and things like that. Once we get into the fall, we get the squashes and the pumpkins, um, cranberries. So we're getting a wide, a wider variety of foods that way. Uh, so this is, like I said, a butternut squash and cranberry quinoa salad. If you are not a fan, this is what the butternut one looks like. So there's so many different squashes on the market. If you are not a fan of butternut, um, you could use a different squash. You could use sweet potatoes. Um, I personally am not a huge butternut squash person, um, but I, this, this dish uh, would be delicious uh, if I just swapped out some sweet potatoes. So what I'm going to do first off, I'm actually not um going in the order of the recipe and i believe um i did send the recipe along to tufts so you can reach out to whoever invited you to this and get your recipe but i will read along and, and tell you what i'm doing one of the things uh that i'm going to be adding to this dish is some some uh, minced up red onion uh, and um, i learned a trick i believe from my mother-in-law when you are using raw onion in a dish if you mince it up and then put it in a bit of cold water, it sort of takes that bitter, sharp harshness out of it. Not bitter, but um, anyway, so I'm going to do my onions first off, just so I can get them soaking. Um, and you only need uh, about a third of a cup of red onion. Um, I like to mince them nice and small. And honestly, I probably put in less than a third of a cup because I'm not a huge onion fan. Um, but I do think they, they add a good flavor. So I like a little bit in there. So, and there we go. Uh, like I said, I like to mince them up super, super small uh, cause I don't want to bite into a big old hunk of onion. But if you like onions, you may want to chop them up larger. So that is step number one. We're just going to chop up these red onions. And you know, if you don't have red onions, you could use uh, Vidalia onions, you could use yellow onions, you could, honestly use whichever onion um, <clears throat> you happen to have in the house. Um, onions are, are usually pretty easy that way. They can usually be, be swapped out uh, for one another fairly easy. So I've got the onions all super, super fine. Most of them anyways. Let's get a couple of big ones. Did not put that in a good spot. All right, so now I just have a bowl of cold water. And I'm just gonna slip them all in there. This is where we are lucky we don't have smell vision because my eyes are already starting to tear and you guys don't have to suffer with that. All right, so that's our onions. So we'll get them over to the side. All right, now what I have already done ahead of time, um, just because we don't have 
forever in these cooking demos is I roasted up my squash. Um, so basically, if you've never used a butternut squash before, like I said, this is what it looks like. And you just peel it like you would potatoes, carrots, whatever, get a, a nice heavy duty vegetable peeler. And then you're gonna to wanna to take a big knife and just cut it in half um, and then scoop out the seeds and then dice it. So what I did with this, um, I like when I'm eating things like the squash and the potatoes, I like the dice to be pretty fine so that I can get more on a spoonful than just that big hunk of, of squash or potato. So what I did earlier this morning is I actually, so I didn't actually buy um, the whole squash for using. I bought one of the ones, my grocery store had the ones that were already peeled and cut in half and seeded. Um, it, was, it wasn't that much more expensive than the whole one. It saved me a lot of work, but I didn't actually need the whole squash. So it was more cost effective for me to get just what I needed. So what I did is you can see the size, I diced it up. Um, real tiny. And so this is supposed to be three cups of butternut squash. Like I said, I think it was, um, it was a half, a half a squash that was about yay big. All right, so I diced that up. Um, in the recipe, it says put it in a bowl, you know, toss it with oil, put some salt and pepper. I actually do all of that right on the pan. Why dirty a bowl with oil? So I spread them all out. I take my oil, I drizzle it, I get my hands in there, I toss it all around, sprinkle a little salt and pepper, and then I roasted it at 400. I did it for about 10 minutes, and then I sort of shook the pan a little just to make sure nothing was sticking, and then I did it 10 more minutes, and they were done. Um, to test, I just sort of stabbed them with a fork, and they were nice and soft. I will say, if these were sweet potatoes, they may have, um, I feel like those take a little bit longer to cook, but still within that 20 to 25 minute range uh, and they're good. So my sweet potatoes are done. Or, I'm sorry, not my sweet potatoes, my butternut squash. Now this recipe also calls for quinoa. This is one of those recipes where you can really do um, a lot of the steps ahead of time. Uh, so it's great if you, you know, if you do have some people in your bubble that you can invite over for dinner um, or if you just want to get a head start on dinner early in the day and then toss this all together at one time and that's really nice to do. So it calls for quinoa. It calls for one cup of raw quinoa, which to prepare quinoa, you can, um, you know, you just rinse it off, then you put it in the pan with, I believe it's twice as much water, uh, whatever the package says. You bring it to boil, let it simmer, basically until all the water evaporates, just toss it with a fork, and you're good to go. But I did it even one step easier, and I got the little uh, microwavable pouch uh, so these pouches are really, really convenient. You just want to make sure you get the kind uh, that don't have a lot of seasonings and um, salts and things mixed in, or even other ingredients. Um, not that that would be bad, but I really wanted to focus on the quinoa in this dish uh, because it's a great source of protein. Uh, it's a great source of fiber. Um, and if I had gotten one of the packages that it was mixed with rice or mixed with barley, uh, we would have lost out some of that protein and fiber. So I really wanted to look for one um, that is uh, all quinoa. And this one here, this is red and white quinoa. It doesn't matter what color you get. When I get, you know, dry quinoa, I usually get the tricolor just because I think it's prettier. No other reason. Um, anyway, so what I did with this is I ripped the top open, I squished it a little bit, and I zapped it in the microwave for a minute and a half. So that's really easy as well. So I've got my, my quinoa's ready, okay, step one. My squash is ready and my onions are ready. Uh, so really that's, I mean, that's almost it. What I would probably, I mean, obviously I'm gonna make the dressing in a minute. Um, what I would do if I was trying to make this in advance, um, I would literally throw the squash, which is what I'm gonna do in a minute, the squash and the quinoa uh, and the craisins in the bowl. I would do the vinaigrette in the measuring cup, pop this in the fridge, pop the other one in the fridge, uh, and then when I'm done, just add in the last couple of ingredients and, and toss it around so it's nice and fresh. All right, oops, I'm gonna need that. So that is it. So far we've got the three cups of butternut squash, about a tablespoon of oil, sprinkle of kosher salt and pepper, uh, one cup of quinoa cooked or 
a pouch of quinoa. Uh, and that is, oh, and I minced up a third of a cup of onion. Actually, I minced up way less than that because I just don't like a lot of onion. Um, but that's what happens when you cook on your own. You can do whatever you want. So that is uh, the main part of the ingredient. So I think what I want to do now is we'll just start mixing it all together. So now, and the thing about doing this in advance too, is now this is nice and cool and I don't have to worry about it, um, you know, heating things up. It's not going to absorb um, as much of the dressing when it's cold. So you don't have to worry about it, um, you know, getting, Super soggy. Now it will absorb some dressing. You want the quinoa and the squash to absorb some of the dressing, but you just don't want it to absorb all of it because then you got no dressing and you got super so soggy squash. All right, so that was our step one. So like I said, feel free to ask any questions in the chat uh, if you have questions about any of the ingredients um, or anything else, any of my techniques, anything I'm doing. So now we just get that quinoa out. I like to try and get every last drop of it here. Now you could, I said, I, you know, I chose this dish. I like the, the protein in the quinoa. Because of the protein in the quinoa, this could easily be a main dish for somebody. This would be a great lunch um, or, you know, or a light dinner. If you wanted to swap out, say, a brown rice, or um, some barley, like I had mentioned, or some couscous or anything like that. You could, but keep in mind, then we're totally removing all the protein. So in that instance, I would serve it more as a side dish alongside a protein source so that you're, you're getting the protein in that meal. Uh, keep in mind, it's the protein that helps keep you feeling full. When, you, when all you eat are carbs, carbs are good. They give us energy. We need carbs. Uh, that's what the squash is. But when all you eat are carbs, they're digested and metabolized very quickly, and you end up being uh, hungry soon after. So you want to balance the energy providing carbs with the protein packed um, nutrients that can really give you energy, but keep that energy long lasting and keep you feeling fuller longer. So that's what the protein, uh, one of the jobs of the protein in the quinoa does. All right, so we've got our three cups of squash, we've got our cup of quinoa, cooked quinoa, so it ended up being like about a cup and a half, um, something like that. Uh, the recipe does call for a cup and a half of water. Uh, that is to cook the quinoa. Oh, there we go. So it's not double the, double the water. Um, now, it also calls for dried craisins. Um, craisins are another one of those seasonal items. I mean, I shouldn't say that. Craisins we can get year round. Um, cranberries tend to be more seasonal. Uh, I'm here in New England and uh, Ocean Spray is only about an hour from my house, all those cranberry bogs, <clears throat> and they're starting to get busy now with sort of draining the bogs and scooping out all the berries. So we have all those cranberries for our fall holidays. So this calls for about uh, a third of a cup of dried cranberries. And they just add a nice flavor. They add a nice little, some chewy texture. Um, and we're just going to dump those in there. I suppose if you don't like, if you're really not a fan of craisins, um, maybe a golden raisin might be nice in here, but uh, I really, really think that the cranberries have a nice flavor. So all I'm doing is just mixing this stuff around. Make sure I don't have anything under my bowl. Now comes those onions, and this is why I would probably let them soak a little bit longer if I wasn't, you know, with all of you today, um, but, and I would honestly probably drain them over the sink in a strainer, but since my sink is way over there, we're just gonna try and get as much water out as we can. And these are those minced up red onions. I would say, so again, the recipe calls for a third of a cup. Um, I honestly probably did like two tablespoons, which isn't even half of what the recipe called for. Um, but, you know, I'm the one eating it, so that's my, that's my choice. All right, I may try and drain the rest of these later and get more in there. That's my, my onions. And we're gonna mix these right in. 
And we do need, I'm going to put this in now, just a little sprinkle of salt, a little sprinkle of pepper. Those are to taste, whatever you, you like. And certainly, um, if you're trying to limit your sodium intake, you could leave that salt out. Um, maybe add a little bit more pepper if you like pepper. Uh, but we're going to have, this is a nice uh, flavorful dressing, so I don't think it would miss, miss the salt. And our final ingredient is either three tablespoons of toasted pumpkin seeds or three tablespoons of chopped pecans. I know a lot of people love pumpkin seeds. I can't stand them. I eat them, they're stringy in my mouth, and I don't like them. Not a huge fan of nuts either in my food, but in this like a cold salad, I do love a little crunch of a nut, and I think the pecans are going to be delicious. So it calls for three tablespoons. I, again, went this labor-saving way, um, and honestly, so pecans are expensive. And so for this dish, I need three tablespoons. I was not about to spend, you know, six, seven dollars on a big bag that I was going to have to chop. So what I did is I bought in the baking aisle, they have this little bag. It's like a third of a cup or a half, half a cup of already chopped pieces. So not only am I getting a lot fewer nuts, um, so I'm just getting what I need, but I'm also getting, where's the little very open guy? Uh, I'm also getting them already chopped, so I don't have to chop them. Um, and so I'm gonna be left with, I'm gonna be left with some, some pecans, but um, they can go in, in different things more salads, whatever. All right, so we're gonna get one, two, and you don't like pecans or pumpkin seeds? I think almonds, slivered almonds would be delicious in this. Um, basically any, any crunchy nut you could do, uh, I think would be very good. So that is, we've just made our salad. So just like that, our salad is done. I've been here for, about 20 minutes, but what did I spend the first five minutes or so talking? And the thing is, yeah, you can say, oh, well, you did the, the squash before and you did that, but, and I did, but honestly, the squash cooked in the oven by itself for 20 minutes. I mean, I shook it once, but I didn't, it wasn't labor intensive. I could do other, other things. All right, so now we've got our salad made. Now we just need to make our dressing. I love to, when possible, uh, make dressings in these little glass pitchers, measuring cups. Um, a, they have a spout, so it makes pouring easy so I don't have dressing everywhere. But it saves me on utensils. So, for example, this recipe calls for those off, um, a half a cup of olive oil. So now, instead of measuring a half a cup and pouring it into a bowl, all I'm going to do is take my olive oil and I'm going to get a half a cup. So now I have not measured, I've not, you know, and I hate when I get oil on my measuring spoons. It's such a pain to clean off. So that's that. So now I've not dirtied a bowl. I've not dirtied a measuring spoon. I've just dirtied this. Now I also need a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar. You don't like balsamic? You can switch out. I probably wouldn't use white vinegar. Um, I think it would be too harsh, but you could use cider vinegar or rice wine vinegar, which would be much sweeter. Um, I happen to love balsamic. Now it calls for a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar. Now, because I took math, I happen to know that my half a cup of oil and a quarter cup of balsamic is going to be three quarters of a cup total. So I'm not dirtying, dirtying, dirtying another measuring cup. I'm just gonna add my vinegar it's so fun to watch the little drops, um, until I have a total of three quarters of a cup in here. Do, 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 do. And this is just, you know, your basic dressing, you know, oil, vinegar, and we're almost there. Okay. So we have our fun little bubbles of vinegar there that sank. Uh, we need a teaspoon of honey. Again, something I hate putting in measuring spoons, so I eyeball it. Score that in. Probably overdid it a little bit. 
a little squirt of Dijon mustard. If you're not a mustard fan, you could leave this out. Um, however, one of the properties of mustard is that it helps to um, bring olive oil or oil and vinegar together. You know, olive or vinegar and oil tend to separate. One of mustard's job is to homogenize them and, and make them stay together. So you, it would be ideal if you could put some mustard in there. I personally don't like mustard, um, but I'm just going to put, like I said, just a little teaspoon if I can get it. There we go. Excuse me. All right. There we go. That's probably about a teaspoon. <laughs> I just got it all over myself. Um, again, a little tiny pinch of salt and pepper. And the last ingredient is going to be one minced garlic clove. And now, especially because of this garlic, um, that's one of the reasons why we can really cut down on the salt and it's not a big deal. So what I do to peel my garlic is I just get my one garlic clove and I smash it with a knife. And it basically, if I smashed it hard enough, it will crack the peel open. And uh, I did not smash it, there we go. And it just lets you take the peel off pretty easy. I actually think I have one of those rolly rubber things where you can put the garlic cloves in it. Um, but then I have to wash that. And if you're learning anything about me, I just hate washing dishes. All right, so we got our peeled garlic clove. And all we're gonna do is I, it calls for one garlic clove minced. I love to use these micro plain graters. This is a pretty fine one on my garlic. Um, a, it's way easier to clean than a mincer, you know, than a garlic press, I should say. And it's way faster than me actually chopping it. And it just gets that garlic, especially in something like this where I'm not cooking it, um, it gets it much finer. So I go all the way to the bottom. I just get it off. And the cool thing, so these are stainless steel, these microplanes. When your hands smell like garlic, uh, if you rub your hands on stainless steel as you're washing them, it takes the garlic off your hands, the smell. So what I do is I wash these by hand, literally by hand. I take my, my hand in the soap and I make sure I'm rubbing down and I just wash them, garlic smell gone, microplane clean. So that's all the ingredients in my, my dressing. So now I'm gonna just whisk them. Now this looks like a lot, sort of a lot of dressing um, for our salad. And like I said, some of it is going to absorb as it sits in the fridge, and that's fine. We, we want that. Um, we just don't want it so absorbing that it's, that it's soggy. All right, and it, I smell the mustard because the mustard's on me. All right, and once it's mixed, so see how that really, um, remember what it looked like a minute ago with the bubbles in the bottom of the balsamic and the oil on the top? Now it is completely, completely homogenized. It is all one. I'm gonna go back to my salad and just pour it all on. Get every last drop of that. And we are done. So like I said, imagine if you were, you know, you're trying to get dinner on the table, this could be a delicious Thanksgiving uh, side dish if you're doing Thanksgiving this year. Um, have everything ready. The squash is cooked, the quinoa is cooked, things are chopped. Just have them all in separate bowls. Have your dressing in a you know sealed bottle or something. And right before you eat, just dump it all in uh, and you're good to go. So this is what our butternut squash and cranberry quinoa salad looks like. Uh, like I said, if you're making it at home, this can be a sweet potato salad. This could be um, an acorn squash salad. This could be um, a brown rice salad. This could be couscous. There's so many different things you could swap out for those main ingredients um, and still keep that fall, that fall feel. Um, as is, like I said, this could be a main dish. This could be uh, a light, you know, meal, uh, a light lunch, or it could be a side dish like this, but if you swapped out the quinoa, I would certainly make it a side dish, not an entree. So you can get some protein in 
<clears throat> somewhere else in the meal. Um, what is the approximate serving size and calorie content? You know, I didn't, um, I didn't do that for this recipe. I didn't analyze it. Um, but the approximate serving size depends on if you're eating it as a meal or as a side dish. <clears throat> I would say this gets, I mean, if I can analyze this this way, I would say it's going to be, um, you could probably get two to three um, portions of this as a main meal. I would say you could probably get five to six side dish portions out of this. Um, in terms of calorie counts, we're really, um, the only big calorie contributor here uh, is the olive oil. So there's a half a cup of olive oil. So if we just divide that um, into, you know, four or six servings, and off the top of my head, I don't remember how many calories are in a half a cup of olive oil. Um, but that would give us uh, the main lump of calories, uh, is figuring out how much calories are in the olive oil. Vinegar, hardly anything. Teaspoon of honey, balsamic, I'm sorry, um, the mustard, the garlic, um, not a lot of, of calories. The amount of red onion, not a lot. Three tablespoons of pecans chopped up six ways, um, not a lot of calories. And even the squash, um, obviously it's got calories, but uh, these vegetables tend to be very low in calories, usually about uh, less than 25 calories per half cup. Um, so if I knew how much the olive oil had, I could figure this out. And like I said, I just can't figure that, that out in my head. Um, but if you end up doing the math, if you just divide half a cup of olive oil by, um, you know, look up the calories and divide it by five or six or however many servings you're making, I would maybe add 50 calories onto that, um, roughly, depending, again, 50 calories entree portion, maybe 30 calories side dish portion. Um, and you'd be in the ballpark calorie-wise. If that is still too high for you, you could cut the dressing in half, um, all of it, uh, and just you'd have, um, you know, you'd still have that same flavor of the dressing, but it wouldn't quite be as, as heavy. And that's an ideal way to cut the, the calories in half if that's a concern for you. Um, any other questions? We do have a few minutes here. Um, I can stay on. Let me put my my glasses on because the computer is way over there. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions about ingredients. Um, but I mean, this is what we've got. I don't know if you guys can see it far away. Um, but it's a really pretty, pretty colorful salad. Like I said, I think this would look real nice um, on a Thanksgiving table next to next to some turkey. And it's something unique and interesting. And and honestly, what makes it cool for Thanksgiving, if you happen to have vegetarians who come, this could be their, you know, their main entree. This could be their main meal. Uh, it gets them vitamins, minerals, it gets them vegetables, it gets them fiber, and it gets them their protein. So that is that. Um, like I said, I'm happy to, to stay on and answer any questions. But we are, we are done our recipe. Uh, I, you know what I'll do? I will read it, <clears throat> read through the recipe in case anybody needs to jot it down. Three cups of butternut squash chopped, a tablespoon of olive oil, which I probably don't use that much when I roast the vegetables, so I would say like a half a tablespoon. Um, a cup of uncooked quinoa or one of these pouches. Um, let's see, a third of a cup of dried cranberries. A uh, third of a cup of minced or finely chopped red onion, or a couple tablespoons like I did. Uh, three tablespoons of toasted pumpkin seeds, chopped pecans, or your favorite uh, nut. That's everything that's in the bowl. Our dressing was a half a cup of olive oil, a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar, or another vinegar if you're not a balsamic fan, a teaspoon of honey, a teaspoon of mustard, uh, if you're not a mustard fan, maybe you just use a yellow mustard instead of, instead of the Dijon, which is a bit stronger flavor. A minced garlic clove and a sprinkle of salt and pepper if you'd like. Oh, and we did put a little salt and pepper in the salad. Um, but like I said, we could easily leave some, if not all of that um, salt out. 
Uh, oh, okay. So I just saw that Holly from HR sent the recipe to everyone. So everyone has it. Um, it'll look like this. So keep an eye open for that with a lovely picture to remind you of what it looks like. Um, and that's it. So thank you very much. Thanks everybody for joining. Uh, I hope you make this. I hope you like it. Uh, feel free to use this as your base and just experiment and, and go from there. Make changes as you see fit for you. I'm going to go clean the mustard off myself. So have a nice afternoon. <laughs>